constantly fearing a smell attack, Rachel rarely socialises with anyone else but her sister Esther. Can I get a pint and a half? <laughs> Esther is her only confidant. But then instead of maturing it like a present... I kind of noticed the last couple of days people kind of moving away from me. I haven't noticed anything. It makes me more worried that I'm smelling bad. It's one of those things you get a whiff of, and it's quite strong and uh, it's quite a sour kind of smell. I can reassure you about the times I've been with you, but I mean... Rachel's order problems makes relationships with men almost impossible. I would just be conscious that they would, were feeling very repulsed by me. I just felt so ashamed and so embarrassed and guilty because it's affecting other people, other people that you're around. And I know it's not nice and I'm aware of that and that's what kind of killed me, that it was kind of subjecting other people to this awful smell. I think she had a boyfriend a couple of years ago for um, a month or so and they'd see each other every now and then and it seemed to be going all right but then it just never got past a certain point. I just felt like a freak really. Um, just felt very, very ugly. Until only last week, Rachel had believed she was alone with her mystery condition. But her life is about to be turned upside down. How important is smell to your sex life? Could you go out with someone that smells? <sighs> I wouldn't dump somebody because of it, because it's obviously a problem that you can overcome, you know, with all the products available. I would have to, um, you know, maybe talk to her about it. It would definitely have to be a problem that would have to be addressed very quick. I would literally bear with it for one date and then forget it the next. To put the pulling power of smell to the test, Martin wants to experiment with human sex hormones known as pheromones. Sex pheromones are the one odour, as it were, the one smell that can actually influence us without us actually knowing about it. Martin sprays one seat with bottled female pheromones. Then asks ten men to have a good sniff of all the chairs. Pheromones don't have a scent, but Martin wants to know if the men will be unconsciously drawn to sit down on the sexy spray chair. Amazingly, six out of ten men make the right choice without even knowing it. I kind of knew where to go, but then didn't, and I don't know why I chose the chair I did, to be honest, but I knew where I had to sit which is quite strange, really. I started getting a warm, tingling sensation. It was almost like a magnetic compulsion to go to the second to last chair. Martin now sprays a totally different chair, but this time with macho male pheromones. It's now the women's turn to put their noses to the test. Will they be seduced into sitting on the hormone spray chair? The experiment is kind of a replication of a study done in 1980, where scientists sprayed one chair in a dentist's waiting room with a male pheromone, which is supposed to attract females. And they discovered that most female patients would choose that chair. I just went instinctively to that chair. I don't know really why. The results are even better than before. Eight out of the ten women make the right choice and sit on the chair sprayed with sexy male hormones. It was surprising how good the results were. 
uh, what was noticeable was the, the uh, women were actually more accurate, by and large, than the men. Women, generally speaking, are more sensitive to, to smell, and in most tests, women do seem to have a better sense of smell. So forget looks or the size of his bank balance. When it comes to sex, we literally sniff each other out. Rachel has made an exciting discovery. She has uncovered fish order syndrome on the internet and recognises the symptoms as similar to her own. I just went on the internet and I came across a chat room. Lots of people had written their stories and it just sounded exactly similar to me. For all this time I thought that I was the only person, really. And then all of a sudden, I was suddenly aware that there were other people that had it as well. And that perhaps there was a name for it, there was, it was an actual recognised condition. Still not sure whether this was the condition she had. Rachel and her mum visit University College London Hospital to see a leading specialist in fish order syndrome. What is it you think smells? Is it your sweat, your skin? It's sweat, it's my underarms. Um, it's like that nervous, stressed sweat. Mm -hmm. And what sort of smell was it? Body odors are like kind of really bad, kind of rancid kind of smell. The inherited diseases that can cause this sort of problem tend to cause all of your secretions in the body to, to smell and it has a characteristic smell of rotting fish right. um, which it doesn't sound like it's something you've necessarily mm. noticed but we can certainly test for that right can we just pop you on the couch over here so are you aware of a smell at the moment mm. really mm. Let's start with your hand, okay. see if I can put anything off there. This is the ultimate indignity for Rachel, being smelt by a doctor. Sit you back down again. Dr. Lackman doubts whether she is suffering from fish order syndrome, but sends her for blood tests anyway. Okay, nice okay. to see you. It's pretty humiliating, I think, to have a condition with a name like that. And with symptoms like that, it's not, it's not something that you'd want to tell lots of people about. It just feel, it just, it's not nice, really. Rachel now has an agonising three-week wait to know whether she has a disease that she finds too embarrassing to name. After 23 years of trying to control her syndrome, Carol has just about reached the end of the line. She has come to the realisation that her obsessive behaviour is causing her more damage than the condition itself, and she's determined to do something about it. For the first time in her life, she's going to visit a therapist.